gas, electricity and water are all part of our daily lives. We take them for granted until something goes wrong. Ever thought of this happening? While most people were enjoying the long sunny days of 1959, this was happening to the water supply. 1959 was the driest summer in Britain for 200 years. In some parts of the country, not a drop of rain fell for two months. Many rivers were reduced to a trickle. Many reservoirs were nearly dry. The Ladyborough Reservoir in the Peak District was so empty that a drowned village was seen again after 30 years. A depressing enough sight. But holidaymakers visited Ladyborough during the drought to wander among the ruined walls that once were houses. The reservoir at Melbury and Devon was also empty, but they seized this chance to deepen it so it would hold more water next time. In parts of Devon, the situation would have been desperate if the water board hadn't found a new underground source on Dartmoor at Tor Marsh. Two wells had already been sunk. The water was crystal pure and ready for pumping, but there was no pipeline laid. So they borrowed miles of plastic pipe from the sewer defence and laid it across the moor. A lot of people would have been completely without water but for this emergency pipeline. It was laid and working inside 48 hours. It stretched three and a half miles across Dartmoor from Tor Marsh to the mains on the Oakhampton Road. But some country areas still aren't on the mains and tankers had to be used to carry water to outlying farms and villages where the springs and wells had failed. Many of these had never failed before in living memory. Over 95% of the population of Britain is now supplied with piped water. This is a much higher percentage than America, but that's no comfort to a farmer whose well's gone dry. But this one, at least, is no longer dry. In some places, the water looked frightful. In some places, it even tasted frightful. Why are we never ready for droughts when they come? When water's short, it's the water engineer who often gets the blame. You know, it beats me. Every time we have a bit of dry weather, you people run short of water. The principal reason, probably, is lack of storage. This is a problem which will have to be tackled uh, very seriously in the near future. Yet there was plenty of water in some parts of the country. London, for example, didn't go short at all. This is London's largest reservoir, the Queen Mary, near Staines, four and a half miles around. Water is pumped into here from the Thames, and then it goes on to a waterworks to be cleaned. The Ashford Common Waterworks is London's newest, and is capable of producing 90 million gallons of filtered water a day. That may sound an awful lot, but there are six and a half million Londoners, and they use 50 gallons a day each. So even working at full capacity, Ashford Common could produce only about a quarter of London's supply. Inside a modern waterworks, everything is spotlessly clean and gleamingly efficient. Here in the pump house, Deputy Engineer Bob Cumming has a word with Shift Engineer Stenny. The first thing that happens to water coming into the Ashford Common Works is aeration. These giant fountains increase the amount of oxygen in the water. Then, the water passes to the micro strainers. Waterman Ted Tagg has been with the water board for 14 years. The water passes from the inside through these fine gauze micro strainers. Those jets are washing. Ted says the strainers have 80,000 apertures to the square inch. You can take his word for it. Next stage in the cleaning process is the secondary filter beds. These are just like large swimming pools with a thick layer of gravel and sand on the bottom. This filter bed is being replenished with clean sand. When the water leaves the filter beds, it gets a small dose of chlorine which kills off any remaining microbes. Then it's ready to be passed into the mains. 90 million gallons a day, and every drop of it safe to drink. Sixty-six percent of London's supply comes from the River Thames. But if there isn't a river handy, a lake will do. Manchester draws a lot of its water from Thirlmere in the Lake District, 90 miles away. 
But where there isn't a natural lake, it may be possible to build a dam across a valley and make an artificial one. This is Lake Verney in North Wales, which supplies Liverpool. In this reservoir too are the crumbling walls of a flooded village, submerged under the rising waters of the lake more than 80 years ago. But Liverpool needs more and always more water. Soon, another Welsh valley is to be flooded, through Werrick, which runs down to Ballon, and another village will be submerged. Capel Kellen isn't a very large village, but 60 people will lose their homes. Their houses have all been bought, and they're staying on here on borrowed time. Soon, they must find somewhere else to live. There's 11 children under 11 at the village school, and Mrs. Roberts, the teacher, comes up from Bala every day. The railway will have to close too. It runs only from Bala to Festinio, but it picks up the older children all up the valley and takes them to school in Bala. Dave Roberts is the counselor, but even he can do nothing. Some families have been in the valley for 300 years. It's hard on the old people. Soon, Capel Kellen will be like this, because we're all of us using more water, a national average of more than 40 gallons each person each day. Two gallons to wash your hands. Three for a baby's bath. Two for this. Another three. Another 30. Lawn sprinklers use hundreds of gallons. And we drink a lot too. Water, I never touch it. It doesn't matter how you drink it, beer or milk, it all comes from water. 900 million gallons of water are turned into beer every year. That's the amount of water in this reservoir. All water supply depends, of course, on rainfall. And when we have a record summer like 1959 with practically no rain, this happens. this happens. And this doesn't. So if on your next summer holiday it looks something like this, you'll have one consolation anyway. You'll know there's no risk of the taps running dry. <laughs> 